So let's all just stand up and I hope you'll be able to see me as I step back enough from the camera for you to see my feet. And just uh, taking a few moments to uh, take a stand by standing in our lives. And we're engaging the, in this as usual in a very playful and open hearted and open minded spirit. And if uh, standing's not possible for you, no problem. If you need to modify whatever we're doing or not do it, no problem at all, because it's just one more door into the same room. But it's a very, very powerful door. And I usually start my day with at least uh, 30 minutes of mindful yoga before going into sitting. And as I've been suggesting, sometimes doing it um, uh, early in the morning before uh, the day gets going uh, is a very powerful way to assert some kind of agency over um, these tumultuous times that we're finding ourselves in. So let's notice that standing is something that's quite remarkable and a true balancing act of itself. And it took us a long time to uh, learn how to do this. Can you all hear me? Wave, wave, wave if you can hear me. Is it okay hearing me? Good, okay. So, so this is a balancing act, standing on two feet. And then what I'm gonna suggest is that we slowly let the weight shift to one of our feet and raise the arms up and see if we can't just stand here uh, gazing out at something, some point that's fixed on the wall or out the window or wherever you're looking so that you're actually uh, standing on one foot and cultivating the balance that we've just been talking about moment by moment by mind, moment mindfully. And you can flap your wings if you want to think of yourself as a bird, but just playing with what the body can do. And very powerful to do this in the morning first thing. And just sets you up for the entire day. Turning the entire day into a mindfulness practice. When you're ready, slowly letting the foot come down so that you're standing on both feet again. Watching the breath come in and come out and feeling a full cycle of the release of whatever kind of effort and energy is required to balance in this way. And then same thing on the other side. And seeing if you can fall awake as much as possible so that you're not forcing or striving or tensing to be balanced, but just cultivating a sense of intimacy with the possibility of balance and how much strength you have to develop in the leg that you're standing on as well as balance and flexibility in the spine to be able to move if you will in one way or another and still maintain your balance. And so here we are. Just like Leonardo da Vinci's Renaissance human in the circle, in the square. Completely proportioned at a human scale, the human body, balanced, strong, flexible, and awake. And when you're ready, slowly, slowly, slowly coming down and just dropping right back into standing on both feet. And if you want to do the Leonardo da Vinci figure again, in that way you can spread your arms and legs out in this kind of a way with a, an equilateral triangle and a sense of the, your humanity, the dignity of standing like this, someplace between heaven and earth, or the past and the future. And our domain is right here, right now. And since we really don't know what's going to happen in the future and never did, it's even before the coronavirus and the pandemic, we never ever know exactly what's gonna happen in the future, but we can control the future to some degree 
sometimes to an enormous degree, by taking responsibility of the only moment we ever do live in, which is this one. And so the more we can live fully and be mindful in the present moment, we've already transformed the future because the next moment is very, very different because we've dropped in fully and inhabited this one. So just feeling that for a moment or two, your own strength, your own rootedness to the floor, your own groundedness, the, the measure of a human being, the beauty, the dignity. And the, at this moment, not taking for granted the breath and your health and the fact that we are able to do this in this moment and we don't know about the future. So really appreciating the, the gift of this moment. And when you're ready, slowly, 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 letting the arms come down and maybe walking your feet back together. And here we are again. And then um, in whatever way you care to, resuming your seat. <clears throat> and seamlessly moving from standing to sitting. The same awareness that we've been cultivating since the first day. Grounded for now in a sense of the body as a whole before it was standing, now it's sitting. We needed to move in order to make that happen. If you're lying down, of course, that's fine too, whatever posture you're in. And um, marveling at the fact that <clears throat> this in-breath does itself. If it were up to us to be breathing, we would have died a long time ago. We're not reliable enough to actually breathe the body that's taken care of for us although we say i'm breathing but if it was up to that you who claims to be breathing to be breathing you would have died gotten distracted got a text a phone call dead so we're not actually allowed anywhere near the the biological apparatus that keeps the breath moving in us and this is all the more poignant in a time of covid19 because that's exactly where the virus strikes and then we can't, no matter what we try to do, get our breath in because the lungs are compromised in a variety of ways that we certainly don't need to go into here. But to really appreciate what we have while we have it and the beauty of it, and it's been this way since you were born. But often we're so busy, we are on to something else. So now let's drop into silent wakefulness, anchored in a sense of the body, sitting here breathing. It's all taken care of and our only assignment, if you choose to accept it, of course, is to rest in the awareness of the body sitting here breathing. And whatever is going on in either the body or the mind or the world, we're just going to let that be in the wings. We're not pushing it away. We're not pursuing it. The welcome, mat is out. the welcome mat is out for everything, but we're focusing center stage on the body, sitting here breathing. Moment by moment by moment. And this is thousands of people around the world, keep in mind, all together with the intention and having had to make room to do this and to tune in and to get on the live stream through YouTube if uh, you didn't make it in time for the first thousand on Zoom. So a lot of busyness to get here, but now we're here. And can we simply be here fully? moment by moment by moment. And resting in awareness, trusting and playing with the possibility that 
for now and right now, there really is no place to go. Nothing you have to do in this moment other than to fall awake, which takes care of itself. And no special something or state or whatever you might idealize as being the end point of this practice. <clears throat> the end is the beginning here. You're already awake. You're already whole. You're already who you are. And the question is, can we realize it right now? Moment by moment, breath by breath. keeping in mind that whatever crosses your mind is part of the curriculum simply by virtue of its appearance. And our awareness as we've been seeing is vast enough to hold it all. And we're stabilizing our attention so that over time we can actually recognize anything that arises in the field of awareness and not have it become a disturbance but rather simply be recognized as an event in the field of awareness. And we can simply <clears throat> maintain our own presence and equanimity and clarity in the face of thoughts and emotions and you know, the past and the future and anxiety and boredom and irritability and anger and any 
possible mind states or body states, including discomfort or uh, agitation that arise. None of it is who you are. And so your awareness or the awareness can simply allow it to be as it is, as we said last time, like weather patterns unfolding in the, in the mind. And if you feel the need to tether yourself, to anchor yourself in uh, <clears throat> some degree of familiarity and constancy, then the body is the place to take that stand, to connect. And so we have this breath coming in and the full universe of sensations of the in-breath and the out-breath and how they express themselves in the whole body sitting here in a posture that embodies wakefulness, dignity, open-hearted presence, intimacy with the inner world and the outer world, which were never separate. And so we discover that this engagement that looks so much like nothing turns out to be just about everything and can really stabilize us and cultivate a kind of resilience that's absolutely critical to a time of such uncertainty and stress and outright pain and fear. Whether you're self-distancing and isolating at home for this extended period of time, or whether you're one of those intrepid people that is called to go out there and be on the front lines in one way or another and keeping other people alive, and our social networks alive, our food supply, the help that people need in any and every way. And we're all part of that because we're all collaborating. In kind of what they call mitigating the infectious spread of this, this virus that humanity has never seen before and to which our respiratory tract and lungs are so vulnerable. And for now, <clears throat> here we are in freedom, the boundlessness of this timeless moment we call now in full awareness.
I'm guessing that most of us, if not all of us, are at home, <clears throat> and we say that we're at home. Ask yourself, how at home are you right in this moment? How at home can you be in your body? Not by trying to be at home, but by letting go into being fully here. How at home <clears throat> are you in this moment in your own heart? With everything that's going on in the heart, everything the heart is carrying, which is, of course, the root meaning of the verb to suffer. And we're all suffering and carrying a lot. How at home can you be with that? Embracing it in awareness. And allowing it to be just as it is. How at home are you in this moment with your own mind? And how oriented it is now to the news and the future and the, and the looming, the looming dissolution those who uh, are have contracted the virus and are at highest risk of actually not getting through for whatever reason in what appears to be very, very, very large numbers in many, many countries. But for now, how, how possible might it be for us to simply hold all of this in the mind and embrace it with wisdom and equanimity and clarity and kindness? But realizing as well that right now, it simply is as it is. And how we are in relationship to it can make all the difference for ourselves and for our loved ones and for the world in what happens when we <clears throat> move out into the rest of our lives today, tomorrow, and going forward. And it's all right here, right now, in this boundless spaciousness of our own exceedingly human, uniquely human, multidimensional, multifaceted, knowing and not knowing we call awareness. And so this time as <clears throat> we draw this formal guided meditation to a close, I won't ring any bells, as I've said before, to really uh, symbolize and emphasize that there is no end to this meditation practice. Life itself is the meditation practice, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's all one curriculum. What Zorba, the Greek, called the full catastrophe of life on this planet. And let's not forget the good, the beautiful, and the deep interconnectivity, the flowering of life that we're a part of, and that's such a huge mystery.